Welcome to EVTN News, your source for Catholic news. And quite honestly, by now, um, I'd like to say that you're coming here and you're hearing about stuff that you're not hearing anywhere else on uh, Catholic YouTube. I don't know, maybe there are other, other uh, websites or other channels that talk about the same things, but I haven't heard a whole lot about, you know, Chicago or... Washington DC or anything so if you're coming here you know you're getting the news so thanks for watching too because I don't really want to talk to myself you know I can talk to myself all day but it doesn't get me anywhere so that's because of your views that I am able to um, <clears throat> that, I, that I continue to do this so let's get started Rhode Island Father Eric Silva was removed from two Rhode Island Catholic churches in February of 2022 for improper behavior. Now he is back at another Rhode Island Catholic church offering Mass. In February 2022, a parent who requested anonymity said Silva asked male children if they were LMNOP and accused them of lying if they said no. Silva asked females... Uh, he said uh, Silva asked females if they were sexually active, and these are minors, and according to the report, similarly accused of lying if they answered in the negative. Oh, yeah, Return to Tradition talks about this stuff, sorry. Uh, anyway, he made comments when he was offering confession. <laughs> there you go. Bishop Thomas Tobin announced that Silva was placed on administrative leave in February 2022, uh, now, according to parishioners at St. Thomas More Parish in Rhode Island, Silva is now offering Mass at its St. Veronica's Chapel uh, in Narragansett. On church schedule, Silva is only listed as Father Eric, while all the other priests at St. Thomas More are listed by their last names. Silva has been offering Mass for the past two weeks in Narragansett. So, we got a perv priest who is... Uh, I guess back in public ministry in Rhode Island. This is a bishop. This is in Bishop Tobin's diocese, the Good Tobin, Bishop Thomas Tobin, the Good Tobin. Um, yeah, I, so there's that. But if you say the Latin Mass, uh, you can't be in public ministry. But if you're a creeper who asks these. Um, wildly inappropriate questions to minors. Eh, whatever. Put him back in public ministry. We're short on priests anyway, right? But those traditionalists, they do more harm than good. If you say mean things like Father Altman, yeah, you can't be a priest. You can't say Mass. But if you're asking uh, boys, if they're LMNOP, then yeah, you can still say public Mass. Makes total sense, right? Um... Let's, let's see what happens. So, the good bishops, right? How many good bishops are there in the United States? Would Bishop Tobin, if the Vatican were to ban um, Latin Mass completely, would Bishop Tobin stand up for the Mass? If the Pope were to reverse Humana Vitae, would Bishop Tobin stand up for the Catholic faith? I think there may be a handful, like... Maybe five bishops in the United States. That's my guess. The rest of them, I think, would say, Oh yeah, this is great. You know, Pachamama, Mother Earth. Um, we need, you know, people don't need to breed like rabbits. Okay. At Lourdes, uh, on July 23rd, 2022, to the customary Eucharistic procession that starts out and ends inside the underground basilica of St. Pius X at the Lord's Sanctuary Complex. Uh, an enormous rainbow flag was added. It was a, a Saturday procession when the affluence of pilgrims and sick persons is more intense. The immense flag was carried by a group of the Lord's helpers in their characteristic dark navy suit and tie, and even by some of the sick persons in their wheel wheelchairs, conducted by nurses in their nun-like white uniform. The saddest part of the spectacle was that the sick persons with incurable illnesses who go to Lourdes hoping for miraculous healings were requested to hold and wave small rainbow flags. So 
not even Lords is immune to. Um, really, let's just call it what it is. It's demonic. This demonic um, influence. All right. So there's some information about Archbishop Wester of Santa Fe, New Mexico. He writes on LMNOP, out, uh, LMNOP Outlet. It's called Outreach.Faith on July 31st that surrogate or adopted children of LMNOPs should be baptized. Now, don't, don't call me a modernist here. Let me think about this thought process. Let's, let's consider this thought process. So I know there are priests who will not allow babies to be baptized if the parents are not married. Okay, I get it. But then what about the salvation of the child? Like, what about the salvation of the child? Now, certainly, they may not be uh, catechized appropriately. But I don't know. What do you do? I mean, to me, I, I'm, I'm actually not sure what you would do. Um, it would be a great... If, if one of these parents approaches you for a baptism, even like LMNOPs, if they approach a priest for baptism, it would be a great evangelization opportunity. And tell them that, you know, as a parent, you are required to um, raise the child in the Catholic faith, and you're living a life that is openly hostile to the Catholic faith. And so it, there's reason to believe that you will not catechize them in the faith, um, or at least teach them accurately what the Catholic faith teaches. So... Um, I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Wester describes the church's attitude, uh, I guess, towards Elemento Pisa's hospitality, openness, and welcome. Not turning the church into such an institution and not baptizing regardless of faith would not be open-minded and even disturbing for him. Wester's trick works as follows. First, he caricatures marriage as the ideal family. Then he uses the unrealistic ideal to solicit understanding for dysfunctional families and divorce, forgetting his ideal family. So he talked about, he said, there is no ideal family. Okay, well, yeah, there kind of is. <laughs> anyway, uh, Wester, he supports the baptism, he, he supports uh, element of peace baptizing children. I think he might support LMNOP marriage if it uh, came to that, but that's just my suspicion. Archvirus Bishop Wester, who um, shut down churches and kept them closed even when the Democrat governor of New Mexico said, oh yeah, you can open buildings, you can open churches. He said, no, we're not going to, because home is the holy place. You don't need to go to a church. What are we, Catholic? I mean, come on. Okay, the Vatican has disbanded the contemplative Trinitarian nuns of Mary. Their faults consist in <clears throat> engaging in perpetual adoration, wearing normal habits, attending the Novus Ordo Eucharists, being inspired by the Fatima apparitions, including prayer and penance, being Catholic-minded and having an interest in the Roman Rite, which is the Latin Mass, I guess. The group was erected in 1993 in Guadalajara, Mexico as Association of the Faithful and in 2010 as Religious Institute of the Diocesan Rite. Currently, they have two monasteries in Mexico and three in the United States in Lowell, San Diego, and West Covina. The nuns didn't make their dissolution public. According to the report, they believe that by nicely asking for a reprieve, Rome will give in. There you go. So you just have to ask nicely. It works for everyone else, right? No, it doesn't. And uh, they have their Novus Ordo order that shows an interest in the Catholic faith. And so you have to shut them down. Rome has to shut them down. So Novus Ordo, you know, and that's what people say. Oh, obedience. We'll just have a reverent. If our Latin mass gets shut down, we'll just have a reverent Novus Ordo. Well, guess what? The bishops in Rome, the bishops and Rome are coming for those too. They're not coming for just the Roman Rite, uh, just the Latin Mass. They're coming for the Catholic faith of the Roman Rite. And so any kind of reverence, they're hostile towards. And people don't understand that. I don't get it. Do you not see that? It's so obvious. Okay. 
on, oh, okay, in China. On July 15th, Francis on uh, Xu Jin, the official bishop of Baoding, published a pastoral letter on the civil registration of the, cler uh, the clergy in the diocese of Baoding. In it, he wrote that more than 30 priests have concelebrated the liturgy with him over recent months. This follows the Vatican-China Agreement of 2018, which I have spoken on um, pretty extensively, uh, actually a lot more early on. I haven't mentioned it for uh, a little while. The pastoral guidelines issued by the Holy See concerning the civil registration of clergy in China it was in uh, June 2019. And uh, this also follows other pontifical statements that encourage the clergy to officially register in all members of the diocese to accept registered clergy so as to favor the unity of the diocese. So it's unity. This is, this is uh, another you know, t uh, tactic of the modernists, but now I can see it's communism. It's communism that the Vatican is promoting. You know, in the 1900s, less than 100 years ago, the Vatican was very anti-communist. You cannot be Catholic and communist, and the Vatican made many, many clear statements. I believe Pope Pius XI uh, had some very strongly worded encyclicals against communism. So, very obvious. Even up until Pope Benedict, the popes were um, very against, very opposed to communism. And now we have a pope who is not. Um, I'm reading a book on communism, by the way. I'll, I'll have a review on that. I don't know in how many weeks. It's going to take me a little while to finish it, but I'll have a review at some point. Anyway, anyone who does not accept the situation of the church in China, um, basically joining the Communist Party, would be denied the sacraments and any special privileges granted by the Holy See in June 1978 to unregistered clergy uh, were no longer valid. So I guess in June 1978, uh, unregistered clergy, clergy who were not registered with the Chinese Communist Party, uh, were granted special privileges to like the underground church, right? trying to help out the underground church. Hence, the civil authorities would treat offenders in accordance with the law and regulations. So basically, Catholic priests in China, like the Catholic ones, you know, who are in line with the Catholic faith, not with the, not with the Vatican's communist deal, uh, they will be punished according to the law. So they're criminals in China, thanks to the Vatican. So, good job. That was whenever I really uh, realized that something was terribly wrong with the church, 2018, uh, whenever I heard about this Vatican Chinese deal. All right, the humble Cardinal Mahoney. <laughs> if you don't know the backstory on Cardinal Mahoney, he was rotten. Um, he released a statement indicating uh, that indicated that he denied the real presence in the Eucharist. And Mother Angelica, this was back when Mother Angelica was on TV. She said, "If I were a parishioner in that archdiocese, I wouldn't listen to a thing he said." And he was so offended, he spent six years trying to get the Vatican to shut down Mother Angelica. Well, in the meantime, he paid out $600 million in abuse claims in his archdiocese. So if he would have spent more time kind of figuring out what's wrong with his archdiocese instead of, instead of trying to get Mother Angelica shut down, maybe we'd be in a better place. But the humble Cardinal Mahoney, I believe Archbishop Gomez, tried to tell him not to appear in public. And he just kind of said, well, whatever. And he makes many public appearances. And... Uh, You'll see. Stay tuned for stay tuned for a little bit more on that. But I do want to talk about this specific instance, which is actually kind of hilarious. Uh, on on July twenty fifth, Mahoney wrote to Los Angeles priests. Uh, the archdiocese confirmed for the pillar. Yes, or the archdiocese confirmed for the pillar that the personal communicant. Oh, it's not what you're thinking. Uh, the photograph in which Mahoney is holding a basket of loaves is meant to harmonize, it's a quote, meant to harmonize with our call of Pope Francis for us to be humbler, showing compassion and mercy, and being with our people in servant leadership. So he wrote to Los Angeles clergy and sent them a photo of him holding bread, 
And he said, this is a humble photo. This is meant to be a humble photo. Here's a photo of me. And uh, on top of that, not only that, uh, he wrote, he would be more than delighted to send a signed copy to any archdiocesan priest who requests one. <laughs> he said, I already sent an 8 by 10 copy to all the archdiocesan priests who might have had the privilege to ordain to the sacred priesthood, lest any of them feel they've been, they've been forgotten. Still, for other interested priests, the 8 by 10 photo will be sent, of course, free of charge. So any of the donors uh, who donate money to the archdiocese will uh, fund the 8 by 10 photo, the printing of the 8 by 10 photo, and the mail cost. I mean, this is like, this is real life, people. I don't even know. I don't even know. When I saw this, it was just, it, it was so funny. I don't know. I, I hope you guys got a good laugh out of that because um, Pope Francis is once again praising uh, his fate, one of his favorite priests, Father James Martin, S.J. Or should we call him James Martin, S.J.? I don't know. Jesuits don't, call, don't want to call themselves Father. Uh, I think Father... Father James likes people to call him Father Jim. But anyway, he announced that Outreach, a new LMNOP Catholic resource he recently set up, had sent the Pope details about Outreach's recent conference, which featured a range of pro-LMNOP speakers advocating positions contrary to Catholic teaching. Rainbow Bishop John Stowe of Lexington, Kentucky, gave the keynote address on the first day of the conference, while Father Brian Massingale openly LMNOP priests, openly LMNOP priests and Fordham, Fordham University professor um, who supports LMNOP marriage, delivered a keynote speech on the second day. He's in the Archdiocese in New York. Martin noted that accompanying the conference brochure sent to the Pope was a letter describing what happened at the conference, especially the panel conversations among people with various viewpoints. Addressing Martin as brother, Pope Francis congratulated the priest for the conference, saying that the most valuable thing was what happened in the interpersonal meetings. Pope Francis also praised Martin for working with the culture of encounter, gross, which he said shortens distances and enriches us with our differences just as Jesus did. Sick. <clears throat> All right, another dissident priest. So, remember how I reported about Cardinal Hollerick visiting the United States? Well, there is a, a video, a 90-second exchange captured in a video Sunday, last Sunday, uh, not yesterday, but the previous Sunday, at Holy Child Jesus Parish in Chicago. Jesuit Cardinal Jean-Claude Hollerick of Luxembourg, who plays an important role in Pope Francis' Synod on Synodality, has some anti-Catholic things to say. During his visit to the U.S., uh, lay Catholic Richard Smaglick asked whether the high-ranking Cardinal thinks sodomy might no longer be considered a grave sin in Catholic doctrine following the worldwide synodal process. If you haven't had a chance, I encourage you to in the link below, check out the video uh, about Cardinal Hollerick. This actually 90-second exchange is pretty interesting to see. Uh, so he asked, he asked about uh, LMNOP. Uh, Cardinal Hollerick said, I do not know what the Synod will bring. We now listen to the people of the world, what they express. So some kind of vague statement, because he knows that when, when the guy used the term sodomy, he knows that he's dealing with, he's not dealing with an ally. Um, he said, I started getting in reports. As you know, I'm the Relator General of the Synod, and so reading all of that in September, we will make a first draft of the Continental Meetings, which will take place. Uh, he said later, adding that he would never consider sexuality separated from love, whatever that means. I think I know what it means. It means LMNOP. Attempting to draw clarity from Hollerick's comments, Smod, uh, Smaglick noted that the sacred scriptures and tradition of the Church have taught for 2,000 years that sodomy is a sin, an abomination that cries out to heaven. 
Uh, Hollerick said, The Bible said that the sun turns around the earth, so the Bible is... We have to give an interpretation to the Bible. I know I am in full agreement with Pope Francis. And so he tries to delegitimize the Bible. Kind of like any of these Jesuits or any of these rotten um, anti-Catholic modernists will say, well, um, Leviticus has slavery in it. It says slavery, it, it has laws regarding slavery. And so that means that the Bible shouldn't be taken literally which means that no one should listen to anything in the Bible except when it fits the modernist agenda. That's what they're talking about. And so he tries to de-emphasize the authority of the Bible, and so that's rotten. But we already knew that he believes in at least four heretical ideas. So, um, like women's, or uh, women's ordination, LMNOP, communion for the divorced and remarried, and I don't know, is there another one? Probably. At least we know those things. Okay, speaking of heretics. Uh, in, ecumen in ecumenical discussions at the Lambeth Conference in Canterbury, England, Anglican Justin Welby, fake Archbishop of Canterbury, said that most Anglicans recognize the Pope as the father of the Church in the West. Hmm. Is that, does he have a problem with that? <laughs> Maybe this Pope. What about the uh, Catholic Popes? Addressing the conference, Cardinal Kurt Koch, president for the Dicastery for Promoting Christian Unity, stressed the urgency of ecumenical dialogue. Koch called the present state of division an emergency in the church. So, this was this organized by Catholics? What an abomination. Seriously. You need to die. You can dialogue with the heretics, but you need to call them. To communion with the Catholic faith and say, repent of your heresy, repent of your LMNOP, your um, fake women bishops. I don't know, just pathetic. All right, here's a good here's a good news story. The abuse lawsuit against former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick is still pending in New Jersey after the parties recently failed to settle the nearly two-year-old case court filings show. The lawsuit also names the Archdiocese of Newark and the Diocese of Metuchen as defendants, alleging that they failed to protect uh, the boy who alleged the lawsuit from McCarrick while he led those New Jersey dioceses. The lawyers revealed in a letter that the Newark Archdiocese has produced 172,734 pages of documents requested by the plaintiff's legal team, which is still reviewing the records. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think you'd need, to, you'd need a good bit of time to review those records. But anyway, I think what this indicates, this McCarrick lawsuit, this is different from the one in Massachusetts that I've been talking about and saying, what happened to it? He was supposed to have a court date in March and no one's reporting on it. There's nothing online. I can't find anything. Now this lawsuit in New Jersey, this is really promising. Because even if McCarrick dies, he might not have to testify. But uh, this is against the Archdiocese of Newark and the Diocese of Metuchen. And so it could be settled out of court. Then that would be really disappointing for us. But if it's not, it's going to go to court and this information is going to be made public. Because the Attorney General could subpoena some of these records. And so this is kind of what we were hoping for. So hopefully this is a promising lawsuit and we can get to the bottom of everything. I mean, better late than never, right? Because we want Cardinal Supich out of there. We want Cardinal Tobin out of there. We want McElroy out of there. They were all people who McCarrick advanced up the ranks, according to you know. And so we want these rotten, corrupt cardinals out of there. And, and Supich and Tobin are, two, are the mo two most powerful cardinals in the United States. I mean, you could still... You could say McCarrick's probably the most powerful, but uh, he's technically no longer a cardinal. Uh, but anyway, Whirl's pretty powerful too. I think he's, I'm sure he's still doing some stuff behind the scenes. Alright, um, so a new rainbow bishop was installed as the new bishop of Phoenix, Bishop John Dolan. He was an auxiliary bishop from San Diego, which is McElroy's diocese. And he, he has said LMNOP masses. And, you know, what's interesting, the Diocese of Phoenix has its own auxiliary bishop. 
Dolan, uh, well, whoever, Pope Francis or whoever appointed him, passed over Phoenix's own auxiliary bishop for a rainbow bishop, who was also an auxiliary bishop in a smaller diocese. Go figure, right? Anyway, they had an installation mass um, just recently last week. Clergy included a number of bishops, and uh, you, you'll, be, you'll, you'll laugh to hear some of these names. Archbishop, uh, Archbishop, sorry, Archvirus Bishop Wester of New Mexico, San Diego uh, future Cardinal Robert McRoy, and Cardinal Mahoney. So he's got the whole crowd of modernist heretics. So what a rotten way to uh, usher in the new bishop. And Bishop Olmsted, the former Bishop of Phoenix, was smiling as he processed in. Really? Are you serious? Are you really happy that your work of the last, I don't know, I think he was bishop for like something crazy like 20 years or 20 plus years. Uh, he worked pretty hard. The Diocese of Phoenix is pretty conservative, pretty traditional. They have several Latin masses available. And he's worked really hard, and that's just going to be destroyed. Lots of vocations, maybe not for long. Because the pro-life efforts are going to turn into pro-climate efforts. Latin masses are going to turn into clown masses. What a way to discourage vocations. All in just a few years. All in a day's work, right? <clears throat> That's the communist infiltration of the church. And people thought, uh, people that would say that just a few years ago, people considered them crazy, but call me crazy. I think it's communism. I mean, if you're not working for Catholicism, what are you working for? It all filters the same way. All right. The number of German Catholics surveyed for Pope Francis's synod is in the lowest single-digit percentage range, says the 13-page summary of German diocese released Friday. Their compilers call for lay preaching, women presiding as ministers, lay people officiating at baptisms and marriages, services in even simpler language, and the elimination of the distance between the meal table space and the congregation. So, I mean, not, nothing surprising there. Ironically, particularly privileged groups feel marginalized in the church, it is said. The report names widely acclaimed heretics, LMNOPs, and adulterers. It complains that women and married men, and the many who are not called or baptized, are excluded excluded from church offices. And this is uh, articles from Gloria TV. They always have um, a fair bit of, what would you say, sarcastic um, presentation of news items, but uh, it's good to hear. It, kind of refreshing if you just need a sarcastic break. Um, you're also, you can also tune into this channel. I, I'm sure I try, I try to, this is the most unbiased Catholic news channel on, in the entire YouTube. All right, now let me get to the comments. Pope Francis did not suspend any traditionally minded orders of anyone, priests or nuns. He doesn't have authority. Well, he's going to try. I mean, you know, don't put it past him. Francis has had his minions shut them down. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live chat. Thanks for joining. When you request a uh, baptism, you make a promise at that baptism to raise your child Catholic. LMNOP cannot do that because that would mean they would have to live chastely. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. The Holy Family is the model for the ideal family, mother, father, children. Yes, agreed. How could that be allowed? So, oh, okay. Lords, how could that be allowed at such an important Marian shrine such as Lords? Modernism, unfortunately. They support mental fantasies, okay. Uh, Hitler wanted unity, all right. Remember, JP2 was secretly ordained when Poland was under control of communism. Yeah, all the popes um, after Karl Marx really condemned communism except for one. And you can probably guess. You're freezing. Sorry, I, I don't know. Maybe the internet's bad. Uh, I just read about a Marian apparition that said some sins would not be considered sins anymore. Yeah, I mean, how many now? I mean, I mean think about it. You know, people are just igno uh, consistently ignoring 
a lot of things. I mean, how many Catholics even believe in the real presence? What's up with these Jesuits? I don't know. Unless uh, Latin Mass is FSSP, I think they will hold firm. Oh, I don't know. Look at what happened with the Institute of Christ the King. So, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't have the confidence in the FSSP that uh, maybe other people have. But prove me wrong, you know? I mean, if they prove me wrong, then I'll admit it. But I, I don't think, I don't know. I don't think the F, if the bishop tells the FSSP to leave, I think they would. And I don't think we have more than five good bishops that would stand up for the Latin Mass. Really, I don't even, maybe five's even a, maybe five's even an overestimate. At least the FSSP owns a chapel where I go. The problem, and see, the problem still is kind of like, what would you say, maintaining unity with the diocese and with the diocesan bishops. So in Chicago, we heard, like I, I, I saw that the Institute, they own their building, However, when the diocese uh, deeded it to them, there is a deed restriction. The deed restriction is that if there is anything that the diocese deems not Catholic, then the diocese will recall that property. It will default back to the, back to the archdiocese. So, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I don't, like I said, I don't, even someone like Bishop Strickland, I don't know if I really see him standing up for the Latin Mass, and that's pretty sad. There's, like I said, there's not more than maybe five or so bishops in the United States. Um, <laughs> maybe there's five or so bishops in the United States who would. Bishop Connolly might be one. Um, but I don't know. We, we'll see. <laughs> what's, this, what's this comment that made me laugh? I just heard a uh, definition I, I never heard before. A pessimist is just a person who is well-informed. Well, I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty realistic. And it's not... The problem. The thing is, it's not hard to predict negative things. And I'm not someone who... I'm not someone who's going to try to predict a bunch of stuff online. I don't know what the future holds. And I hope that the Latin Mass expands rather than is shut down. But I think we need to plan for... Um, basically worst case scenario where Latin masses are shut down for any of these uh, any Latin mass that is associated with the diocese so FSSP Institute or diocese and they will be shut down um, we need to plan for that Does, do I think that's going to happen I don't know it doesn't seem like it will happen soon but it seems like if you have a specific diocesan Latin mass or even Institute or FSSP there's a chance that they could be shut down. And so plan for it. Ask your priest, what are you going to do if you're shut down? And plan accordingly, right? Find a priest who will say a Latin Mass for you. I don't know if that's even possible. It's, uh, it's really hard. It's really hard. How many will stand up for the Mass? And this just gradual kind of pushing the traditionalists aside. It's, it, you know, the more, the more they compromise... The harder it is to stand up, and so they say, "Okay, we're 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 moving you out of a parish church into a gym." Okay, and then the priest will say, "All right," and they say, "Well, you can only say the Latin Mass on first Sundays," and the parish the priest will say, "Oh, okay," and so there you have already you've already compromised, and then what? And then when they shut you down or move you just to a weekday, then what? You can't do any sacrament. You can't do any all right sacraments. Oh, okay. So then they've they've already compromised. That's it. They're done. So um, plan accordingly. That's all. Prophecy of the Book of Daniel says continuous continual sacrifice will be suspended. We need to pray and fast to shorten the time. Well, the bishops already suspended public mass during the virus. Remember. Um, are you sure Daniel was not referring to the animal sacrifice the Jews used to have? I don't know the discussion of that. That's an interesting thing. I, I would like to research that. If anyone ever researches that, let me know. Okay, anyway, this has been EVTN News. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, we are the laity, and we will not be silent.